personal finance expert and MeVest founder, Leslie Ann Scorgi, joining us on Canada Now. And Leslie Ann, your latest article in The Star discusses advice on how potential female entrepreneurs can start their own business. Right. And I was so excited to write this piece in the store because I am a female entrepreneur. And what we're seeing right now is that women entrepreneurs are crushing it. They are banking some big revenue dollars. But I think what's so cool with what's happening is they're fed up with trying to be like, superheroes to everyone and everything, not getting paid right, um, being, you know, mom at home and, and the superstar at work. And they're just leaving their traditional work environment to start their own thing. The other thing I think is really cool is that um, these women who are starting businesses right now are actually generating more jobs than male entrepreneurs. So very cool to see uh, these ladies channel their their energy and start to bank some serious dollars. And and you're looking to help them get a leg up with this article and with some advice and pointing them in the right direction. And one of those directions is uh, in the form of grants and incubator programs that women can apply for. That's right. So there's thousands of dollars in grant money available in every single province just for women entrepreneurs. This can be as easy as Google searching what is locally available through the government and through public and private organizations. So I'm not kidding. Thousands of dollars that are, they're just for women entrepreneurs who are in startup more mode or have recently started their business but are looking to take it to the next level. So this also could be associated with what's called incubator programs and accelerator programs. So if you are a woman entrepreneur, maybe you have been in business for a year, for example, but you want to take your, your revenue game to the next level, these incubator and accelerator programs are just like how they sound. They are meant to help you grow the business to the next level. So for so many women entrepreneurs, that could be uh, a new strategy. It could be adding additional product lines, but um, it's a very focused set period of time where you work with mentors, coaches, and you get funding to, to move things along. Oh, excellent! It's it's uh, it's more than just money. Uh, the these programs that that that's excellent. Now, what about? I mean, in talking about money, what about uh, getting a loan or a, a line of credit? Who do you go to for that? Well, I can tell you from firsthand experience because I've had a couple of businesses myself that the traditional banking system is really set up to support businesses that have been uh, longer established. However, you can apply for custom loans or loans specifically for entrepreneurs through other channels. So one example that comes to mind is Business Development Bank of Canada. All they do is fund entrepreneurs and they have a separate arm just for women entrepreneurs to help give them, extend them loan money. Um, now, and like in every province, they also have other institutions. Typically, they have some kind of government backing to them. Uh, but in Alberta, for example, example, Alberta Women Entrepreneurs is another place. It's like an alternative to a bank where you can secure funding at competitive rates. But um, there's somewhat less stringent qualifications that can be really helpful. So for most women who are applying for funding, which I do recommend that you do, um, you're going to have to come up with uh, your, your personal bank statement. Uh, so a net worth statement, a cash flow statement for the business and your business plan. I have like a little bit of opinion around uh, the net worth statement. Like I wish that wasn't so much a part of the equation because I think it's, it's quite biased to yeah. support women who like own homes and, and have a big TFSA right. versus on the merits of the business. But 
we'll, we'll save that rant for another day. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and and, and I, I totally get that. And I guess at, at this point, Leslie Ann, if uh, you're going about doing this and you got to get your 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 business and, and financial ducks in a row, but I would think that you have to have a really clear vision of what your business is going to be just so you have a good understanding of it yourself, but also so that you can present it to those that you need to present it to. Now you're, you're also talking about something, the secret ing ingredient, if you want to pitch your business, clarity around your vision, what you need for funding, where you're going, how you plan to manage your margins, all of that, those are the ingredients that you would need to pitch even on a show like Dragon's Den or Shark Tank uh, to, to pitch an investor. Maybe it's not on TV, um, but all of that, uh, those details you need in order to convince somebody to give you funding. Uh, the people who give you funding sometimes are referred to as investors or angel investors. Uh, and then there are those big, big pitch contests. But I actually think that if you have that clarity of your vision, you yourself you're, are clear, you are able to communicate, you should pitch. You should pitch to everywhere and everybody that gives you a platform to pitch your business because it is going to be excellent PR for you and your business. So last week I got sent uh, a media pitch and I, I get sent them like you probably get the same, like hundreds of mm. them each week, but mm. one of them really stood out for me. And uh, it's because I'm a mother myself with a business. Uh, it was called total mom pitch. And uh, these, this, this is a pitch platform just for, for mothers to get up and pitch their business, uh, get mentorship and, and possibly qualify for funding. And what I thought was really cool about that is it will help so many women um, actually hone in on their pitch skills, but also some of them are going to get some money and some coaching and mentorship. So all of these pitch platforms are really great, but the only way you win is if you're clear about where you're headed. Yeah, well, and, and maybe uh, someone that you're pitching or that you're going to from a financial standpoint is someone within your family uh, to borrow money, receive money in, in, in some way. I, I, I shudder at the thought oh. of, of even doing that. But there might be those that are listening that are saying, well, actually, you know, and, and thinking about uh, that possibility, I, I would think going in, um, really lay down the rules here of, all right, I'm taking this money, but on this basis, and this is how I might be paying it back. Yeah. Like check for strings. Anytime you mix <laughs> family and money, you just want to see what kind of strings are attached there. My advice here is if you're going to mix the two together, just do it with somebody who like understands you and your business and has even a semblance of a background in finance so that they understand uh, what kind of investment, uh, like what an investment is and when they would uh, get their money back. So just be careful if you're going to, if you're going to tap into family money would be my advice. Yes, that is murky. And uh, I get the willies <laughs> just even thinking about it, but that might be um, the the one avenue that you have to go down to to get this up off uh, off of the ground. Um, what about reinvesting in yourself in into your own business growth? So I like to follow this model called profit first, and it's the way I've run my business for years um, and my previous businesses. And it ensures that as a woman entrepreneur, you are paying yourself first because you're the one doing all the work um, an appropriate amount. So we're not talking about like extracting all the value from your business. There is a balance between growing your revenue, reinvesting that revenue to continue to grow your business, but it has to be in balance with you paying yourself so that you are taking care of your own personal finances. So when I am asked by women entrepreneurs, like what is the balance here between um, how much I put in personally to my business and, and how much do I, do I seek from alternative sources of funding? 
And the answer is it, you shouldn't go all in with your own revenues and your own money. You should have a blend between uh, funded money. So money coming in from external sources and your own money and some of your revenues. So it's a little bit of a balance. You'll find that balance uh, as your business grows. So would, would the numbers change on that? Does it differ from entrepreneur to entrepreneur or is there uh, you should put this much, this, this, this percentage into this and this percentage into that, yeah. is there like a general rule to abide by? What a great question. Uh, so oftentimes the profit portion that we coach people on is about 30% going toward uh, paying the entrepreneur herself. However, it can vary depending on the stage of your business and the industry that you're in. So uh, this would be the perfect opportunity for whoever is listening. Um, if this is relevant for you, hop on to Google and do a bit of digging. What profit portion should I be paying myself because I'm in this category of business? So retail profit portion is going to be a little bit different from like a service-based business. And those differences you will want to honor uh, because you're also trying to manage uh, keeping that business growing and paying other people, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. 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 No kidding. So right. where does a, a personal finance expert like yourself fit into all of this? Like, uh, you know, obviously it's what you do, but having said that, would you advise that if, if uh, a female entrepreneur is going to be taking this step that they seek the advice of a personal finance expert or, or uh. someone that's kind of in a no? Yeah, so 100% recommend that the woman entrepreneur seek some, some financial counseling. The person that they hire, by the way, in my opinion, needs to have a business background. And they probably they themselves have either they've owned a business in the past or uh, they are involved in coaching on business. I will tell you, there are a lot of loud voices out there when it comes to financial coaching and counseling right, right now. And unfortunately, a bunch of them are unqualified. So this is the part where you, as a woman entrepreneur, you need to interview people. You need to spend some time. You don't want a coach or counselor who is all fluff and no credentials. Uh, you want your your, uh, you know, right hand person in your business to to really understand the numbers, but also to get business strategy. So, so not just someone with a calculator. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little more, no. more digging than that. Check out mevest.ca personal finance expert, mevest founder, Hank and Dot's mom, Leslie Ann Scorgy. Leslie Ann, we'll do it again next week. Thanks for this. Thanks, Jeff.